Hi guys, I just did this very quick and very easy makeup look where I just focused on my natural features instead of dressing up my face too much so that it might be inappropriate for work and school. I find that this look is very customizable. You can skip or customize each step. Every step is optional with makeup as always, but I hope you find this helpful. The first thing I'm going to do is use a hydrating primer. This is the Too Faced Hangover RX Replenishing Face Primer. Now, this is definitely an optional step. A lot of people use primer and a lot of people skip primer. If you find that you have oily skin or enlarged pores, you might find a pore filling primer more suitable, like the Benefit Professional Primer. But I just want to be nice and hydrated today. You especially want your under eye moisturized. That will help any concealer just kind of melt into the skin a little bit more and it won't be so prone to settling in fine lines. When I sat down to start filming, I found about 10-15 gray hairs right underneath there. I didn't know where those came from. Those snuck up on me. So I guess fine lines are something I need to start keeping an eye out for too. For work and school appropriate makeup, I feel like this step is definitely customizable for you in your own professional environment. I'm going to be using the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue Tinted Hydrating Gel Cream, and it's kind of like a BB cream. I'll add coverage a little bit later because my skin needs it, your skin might not, and I just don't like a heavy product in a professional environment. I want to look mostly natural. And by natural makeup, I mean we're going to focus on the natural parts of the face, like the skin, the brows, and the lips, and nat natural definitions on the face, instead of adding different colors and shimmers. Like, we won't be using highlighter today. When making this video, I'm trying to keep certain people in mind around me. Like, my friend in a nursing environment, and my relative in middle school, and... I try to think of all of those things in all of those different environments, and that's kind of how I came up with this look. But they all have different skin types for me, and that's where something like this would be very customizable. I did not want full coverage on the face. I wanted a very comfortable, natural-looking product, but I do want more coverage underneath the eyes. I remember when I started wearing makeup. In middle school, when I begged my mom to let me wear makeup, I was given a light purple shimmery eyeshadow, mascara, and lip gloss. And then in high school, I experimented with a little bit more eyeshadows. It was mostly those CoverGirl quads in the neutral shades. And I believe I had a CoverGirl blush, and I used that Maybelline Dream Matte Mousse foundation. I feel like everyone used that back in like 2006 to 2010. That was a pretty popular one. Cause I think it came out around that time and there was definitely nothing like it, at least not at the drugstore. I like to blend a little bit of that concealer just right around here where my nose gets really red. Now we can set all of that and I could use a translucent powder like my Cody Airspun, which is like four or five dollars at Walmart. It's a it's a great product, but because I wore kind of a BB cream type product, then I want to set my foundation with more of a powder foundation just to add a little bit more coverage. I want to set the under eyes first though, so the concealer doesn't start creasing. I love those two products together because they just look very natural and comfortable on the skin. Now, as I said, I'm not going to highlight. That's personal preference, definitely based on your own professional work or school environment, but I am going to just add a little bit of dimension to my face using my e.l.f. blush and bronzer duo in the shade Fiji. I'm taking my Real Techniques blush brush, 
One good way to make sure you never go overboard is when you tap into the brush a little bit, you shake it off and then I tap on the back of my hand twice just to make sure that I, I knock off most of that pigment because e.l.f. blushes can be pretty pigmented, which in some ways is a good thing as long as you apply it pretty easily and light-handed. After blush, I usually go back in with my powder brush and I kind of buff it out just to make sure that it's really blended and looks really natural. I don't always bronze. I think in the winter I like never bronze, but I do like to take this very soft and very fluffy brush from Wet n Wild and just kind of bronze the perimeters of my face. So I look a little bit more natural that's why I like this soft and fluffy brush because it doesn't, it doesn't like pack on the pigment in one area. It definitely helps to move that pigment around. I'm actually done with the face and as you can see, I mean it just took a few steps and a few minutes and I got the coverage that I wanted without too much product and too much time. Now I'm going to focus on filling in the brows. Obviously this is not necessary for everyone but when you want to apply makeup to just kind of enhance your own personal features, I feel like lashes, brows, and skin are the most important parts of that. Having very clean and defined brows just kind of frame the face and it looks very nice and you definitely don't have to go overboard. You don't even have to fill them in if you don't want, but as you can see, mine get pretty sparse in here and I want them to be nice and defined and shaped. I'm using my NYX Micro Brow Pencil as usual. I feel like if you used Dip Brow or any other pomade, it might be a little bit easier to get carried away. I like using a pencil because it's very quick and easy. Some people find powders more suitable for them, but I already have pretty full and thick brows. So I just want to shape and define them. I don't necessarily want to thicken them too much. So now for the eyes. I kind of want to put a little bit of color on my lids. Now that's something that you could personally do with your bronzer. I'm going to be using my Lorac Pro to go palette, which as you can see is very well loved. I'm taking the shade Cafe, which is pretty similar to my bronzer. I'm taking a fluffy brush and just running that right over the crease and close to the brow bone. Now this is where you could customize this and basically do it whichever way you want. You could add a little bit more of a matte brown on your lid. You could add a lighter color on your lid just to kind of brighten the eyes. Or you could do what I'm going to do, which is define the lash line a little bit more. So I'm going to take a little bit more of Cafe, but I'm also going to mix in a little bit of Mink, which is kind of like a dusty purple charcoal color and I'm taking a shorter and more dense brush just to buff it on the lash line. I'm doing this in place of wing liner. I know that wing liner is like all the rage right now but I mean number one not everyone has time for that. Number two it's not always appropriate. It's a classic but it can kind of look overdone. So this is the softer and more natural alternative. I'm going back with this fluffy brush and I just want to smoke that out and make sure that it's nice and blended with no harsh lines. I'm adding just a little bit more outer corner because I blended quite a bit of it away. And I'm adding a little bit to the outer corner of the lower lash line, but I definitely, I definitely want to keep that blended as well. 
Now I have some definition to the lashes, but because I didn't add shimmer and I didn't add any unnatural colors, I mean, it's very appropriate. It's very simple. It's very quick. The next step I never skip, I have to curl my lashes. I mean, not everybody does and not everybody has to. I remember my mom gave me my first lash curler in high school and I thought it was freaky. I used it sometimes, but I don't think I appreciated the difference that it gave me until a little bit later on in life. And now I definitely notice a difference if I don't curl my lashes before applying mascara. You definitely want to curl them before mascara though. If you ever see those pictures of an eyelash curler full of lashes, that's because somebody still had wet mascara and they got stuck and they pulled and it's bad and it's terrifying. Now I'm going to apply mascara and I just picked up the Essence Volume Stylist 18 hour lash extension mascara with lengthening fibers. <laughs> and Tati from Glam Life Guru and Casey Holmes were talking about this. It's a very interesting small brush. I can definitely see the fibers but my mascara was getting old. I needed to replace it anyways. And I love Essence mascaras. They're only like four or five dollars max. I think this one was five dollars, but most of them were four dollars. So we'll see. It's not clumping my lashes as much as my old one did, but I feel like I just, I just felt some fibers. <laughs> And I got mascara on the lid, but I will go back and fix that. Oh, those fibers. Oh man. I've used mascaras with fibers before, but these are, must actually be doing something because I feel them. I feel them. Now I am someone with a double lash line and that means that my lashes don't grow in a perfectly straight line so they can get kind of wild and crisscross quite a bit which makes applying mascara pretty difficult and it makes clumping happen pretty easily. This however is kind of giving me like wispy thick lashes that I'm pretty impressed by. I did not expect that. This is kind of what my lashes look like when I use the much more expensive Tarte's Lights Camera Lashes Mascara and the Smashbox Full Exposure Mascara. Those are my favorite because of how much volume they give me, but this is doing the job. So I've been playing around with this mascara and I'm kind of fascinated because from a distance, I mean, my lashes look great. Up close they look kind of messy but I don't have a lash comb right now. As you can see I I do have a very finished and well put together look here and every step was optional. If you don't like to fill in your brows don't waste your time filling in your brows. If you don't want to bother putting eyeshadow on that was optional as well. But I am going to add lipstick. I never would have worn lipstick in middle school. Probably not even high school. I don't I didn't start wearing lipstick until after school in general. But for work appropriate in office environment. Oh, what am I doing talking and putting on lipstick? For work, <laughs> for work appropriate in office environment makeup, this would be considered a My Lips But Better color. It's very similar to my own natural lip color, but it looks just a little bit better. And this is the kind of lip color that I would choose for a more professional environment. But for school age children, I would definitely go with like a tinted lip balm. No, I remember I wore a lot of lip gloss. 
back in the day. A lot of lip gloss. I hope this gave you an idea of what you might find suitable for your own environment, whether it is work or school. I find this look very appropriate and not overdone, especially because we did not add glitters or shimmers or crazy colors. We just emphasized my own natural features. So please like this video if it helped you. Comment below on a video idea that you might want to see and please subscribe so you can stick around for future videos. Thanks for watching. Bye guys. I just saw those gray hairs again. This one right here. It's just doing its own thing. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> I'm only 25. <laughs> Ugh!